So I got asked to share my opinion on the veg source rust diet cures most diseases McDougal. Let's have a watch. Let's have a watch. Kepner diet is a diet of rice. They use white rice and uh, fruit and fruit juice and sugar, table sugar. They had to give table sugar to cut the nutrient content of the rice. You see, rice has so much protein in it that it, uh, it would burden failing kidneys and failing livers. So in some cases, Kepner had to make half the diet sugar, which has no protein, so that uh, the patient would, would do okay would not suffer from too much protein. A white rice was just about 5% protein. Uh, his, um, his naysayers, the people who wanted to see Kepner fail, actually took eight of his patients who were on the rice diet, put them in a metabolic ward, and studied them, and reported they could find no metabolic deficiencies and only positive results on his patients. If you want to find this research, easily just by going to a link you go to my December 2013 newsletter and just what I said about his uh, contemporaries trying to prove him wrong just hit the link and you'll read the paper yeah anyway that's the kind of diet that he fed him why do you use white rice because he thought it was more palatable and it was more convenient to get you can read about Walter Kempner one of his uh, close uh, associates for many years wrote a, a, a biography of him. It's well worth getting if you're interested in the subject. It talks uh, about the man and about the things that he did. So the McDougall diet versus the Rice diet, the Kempner diet. Well, the one thing he did, he showed me when I read his work, uh, the power of diet therapy, and he also showed me that there's no possibility of developing any nutritional deficiencies based on the diet I recommended. After all, he recommended rice and sugar and fruit, and they couldn't prove any nutritional deficiencies. So all this nonsense about where do you get your protein, and where do you get your calcium, all the things that people would worry about, even myself when I first started out, were proved to be uh, nonsense by his work. Uh, before I was born, in 1947, Kempner had disproven concepts that your doctors hold today to be true. Diet has little to do with heart disease. Many, if not most, of your doctors still believe that, and Kempner proved that to be wrong before I was born. Uh, additional protein improves health. Your doc I know almost all your doctors still believe that. Kempner proved that to be incorrect before I was born. And carbohydrates cause diabetes. He showed that his diet, which was 93% carbohydrate cured type 2 diabetes 100% of the time. All this published before 1953. Well, I do use the Kempner diet sometimes. I still take care of real patients. I mean, I'm still a doctor. I take care of patients. And uh, we usually have 40 to 50 people each program. And we run uh, six programs for the public a year and two for businesses a year. Or, programs. And I, about three times a year, I have a patient who is so severely ill, primarily with kidney disease, they only have maybe 10, 15, 20 percent of their kidney function left, that I have to teach them the rice diet. I consider the rice diet the diet for the nearly dead, and that's how I use it. But the McDougall diet, what I teach, what uh, Jeff and Sabrina Nelson have brought you together to learn, what Caldwell, Esselton, and Ann are trying to teach you, this is the diet for the living. There's no apology necessary. This is the best tasting diet, the least inexpensive diet, the diet that is most kind to animals and to the planet. There's just no reason to in any way question what you're doing once you know the truth. I was aware of the Kempner diet back in. That was a good video, wasn't it? Good on Jeff for putting that on. Um, it's good having someone like Dr. McDougall, who so many people rate, give sugar the like. Dr. McDougall, he says, I give my sickest patients, now correct me if I'm wrong, he gives his sickest patients the rice diet, the sugar, fruit, and rice diet. The sickest people get to eat the most sugar, and they get the best results. 100% 
type 2 diabetes cure, according to what McDougall said in Canada. That is pretty interesting stuff. And it flies in the face of all the ears on the internet who say, don't eat sugar. McDougall wouldn't recommend sugar, but McDougall just recommended that then. And the Kempner, he got that from uh, Kempner. And I knew about Kempner back in 2001 via McDougall. I read John Robbins' book, The Food Revolution, which is a great book to read. It doesn't talk much about what to eat. It's just more about the, the concept of veganism and plants and the, just everything, you know, the animals, the planet, society, etc. Great book. And uh, I don't really rate John Robbins as much as a person, but as an author, good stuff. The rice diet is pretty much what I've been eating. Uh, rice, I'm just a fucking rice addict. I'm a fruit addict. And if you haven't already picked up, I'm a sugar addict. And rice is sugar, fruit is sugar, sugar is sugar. Potatoes are sugar, carrots are sugar, beetroots are sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. So when people just... I think when I learned about the rice diet, I would have the sugar... But then I was getting into the health scene, the organic scene, and there's all this sort of like anti-sugar stuff. So I was sort of, I was like, oh, sugar, you know, I'll go to honey and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I'm vegan, can't do that. So I'd go to like to molasses and stuff, like, oh, that's refined sugar. And so then I then I got into fruit, and I'm like, oh, this is the best, this is not the healthiest. And it is, but to get ripe fruit all the time is very, very difficult, like quality fruit. Now, there's so many idiots out there go, this is fruit's quality. Like, I mean, like high bricks value, like 25 bricks value fruit. That is rare as fuck. It doesn't matter how much money you got. 25 bricks value fruit. When you eat that, you just, you literally like, you, you have to sit down. If I give you a 25 bricks value apricot, you, 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 you just, you stop. When someone is on their fucking phone and they're eating a piece of fruit like that, that fruit's shit. If you're on your apple, eating an apple and looking at your screen, that's shit fruit. The best, where you, you'd be like, whoa, you put down this apple and you'll look at this apple, you're like, oh, like, and you, you want to share it with someone or you want to like, fuck, this is good, I'm going to hide it. That's quality fruit. And that is very, very, very hard to get. And unless you're an experienced fruit eater, I've been into the fruit lifestyle, raw food since 2001, 2002, 2002. I remember that raw food book, 2001 vegan, April. So I understand what good quality fruit is. And I've traveled around the world as a fucking fruit hunter. You see my videos. That fruit's hard to get. So I got into that fruit lifestyle. I was like, I can't eat sugar, but I can eat fruit. And in 2009, Frederick Patnard says, oh, I have sugar now and then. I'm a fruit. It's fine. And I was like, oh, but isn't sugar's poison. He goes, the Harley, like, what do you think you're drinking? You're drinking sugar cane juice. Where do the calories come from? Sugar. Oh, but, but, Harley, it's just raw food purity dogma. And I was like, yeah. And it took me another three years before I added in cane sugar to my diet. And when I did in 2012, performance went next level. Performance went next level. I started adding in cane sugar. My preference is organic cane sugar because I, I love supporting organic when I can. And generally, organic sugar is pretty easy to get. This stuff, man, is fucking like, oh. boom! Glucose induced phagocytosis, healthy immune system. Glucose derived ATP, sharp. No stimulants today for doing Nothing, no gas. But you got these idiots out there who say, oh, don't eat sugar, don't eat sugar. McDougall wouldn't recommend sugar. You know, even again, to bring up vegan gains again. Vegan Gains loves quoting these, these things, but why doesn't Vegan Gains do a video about the rice diet, the fruit, the sugar? Look at the weight loss transformations here. Look at these weight loss transformations. Look at this, this is, this is Joe Best, and there's before and after. Nothing's happened to him. Um, this is, and then you can see Cycling Slim Craig Roberts, that's before and after. Joe Best looks the same as two years ago. Cycling Slim Craig Roberts is like, looks unrecognizable. Let's say, Cycling Slim went into a bank in Chiang Mai last year, held it up and robbed it. People wouldn't recognise who it was. If Joe Best walked into a bank, you know, just having a bit of fun here, but if Joe Best walked into a bank and robbed it in Chiang Mai last year, it still looked the same. <laughs> if there was photos of Joe Best, like, you know, uh, toes to top, people were like, that's, that's him. If it was a toes to top photo of Craig Roberts, robbed a bank in July 2015 Chiang Mai, People are like, that's not him. He's, he's, no, he's, this guy's like 50 kilos extra. You know what I mean? So that's, how, that's what we're talking about. People who take action, get it fucking done, and people who yap about it. So the rice, the sugar, and the fruit are the best fucking foods for health. They are the best foods for sugar metabolism and the best foods for getting energy done. And these people on the Kempner diet were sick. They're not athletes. They were too sick to train. But just by changing their diet... 
and putting them on a massive amount of sugar, 525 grams of carbs is a lot of carbs for someone who's like laying in bed or sitting around. To eat that, to stomach that, that's a, that's a lot of work. So these people carb the fuck up and then slim the fuck down. Now, I haven't talked to McDougall about this. I've talked to him a few times, but not, nothing in detail. I, I suspect that McDougall doesn't want to promote the sugar thing because we live in such a fucking phobic society. If McDougall made this more public, you know, if, if he changed his book from the, the starch solution to the sugar solution, it'd be too much of a jump. Even though all the science is there proving that the high sugar, the rice diet, the fruit diet, raw till four, Kempner diet, carb the fuck up diet, whatever you call it, what we do, what I do, what Freely did to lose 20 kilos and keep it off and have energy, what everyone else does, everyone else eats the same as us, man. Varying amounts. What, we give templates. People say, you do a lot of K's, or you eat a lot of food. Whatever. Like, give me some numbers. I provide 10 grams of, uh, the template I provide people, 10 grams of carbs per kilo body weight per day. Go up or down from there. That's like a baseline. You go, oh, that's, that's too much food. I can't stomach that. Okay, drop it down a little bit. Oh, that's not enough food. I need more. Okay, bring it up a little bit. That's a template so people can... It's like, a, it's like you go into a... Sh- a sh- let, 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 me, let's let me go into a... Harley, set the shower for me. She set the shower temperature for me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you something. You might get in the shower and go, oh, this, is, yeah, this is good. You might go, oh, this is too cold. Oh, fuck, that's too hot, man. But at least I'm setting it for you. I'm giving you some guidance. So all these people, just they're just fucking haters, man. Just fucking haters. And I don't hate them, but they're just fucking ungrateful fucking haters who say, oh, this doesn't work or whatever. But if you actually do what I say, you get the results. And you've got to be patient and do long term, all right? When, if, you, like, I, if you've got a weight issue, don't eat fucking any oil. And eat as little protein as possible. Simple as that, in my opinion and in my experience. I see people all the time, oh, going what? And I'm like, look at what you're eating, man. Vegan donuts aren't fucking weight loss food. Yes, we eat them. I eat them, man, but I'm like 3.9% body fat. I can get away with it. Fat wise, it's not healthy. But I'm not looking to, uh, what's the word? I'm not looking to lose any weight, man. I'm already like, fucking, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it looks weird how lean I am. Low body fat, 3.9% body fat, DEXA scan verified. So if you're eating vegan donuts, eating vegan burritos, eating vegan Oreos, and then you're saying our program doesn't work, that's not in our fucking program. My program is no oil, minimal salt, minimal salt, just enough of the condiment to get the rice or potato in. It's not Oreos, man. It's not vegan donuts. It's not fucking peanut butter on toast. That is not my advice for weight loss. For weight gain, yes. If you're happy with your weight, yes. If you're trying to gain a bit of weight, yes. If you want to lose weight, man, no. Don't fucking lie to me. Don't lie to yourself. And don't lie to other people around you. Okay? Just be honest and be clear and transparent. That's my take on the rice diet, camp and diet. I've known about it since 2002. Have I stolen a lot of the information from that? Yes, I have. Did I give credit to camp in my book? Pretty sure I did. I did McDougal anyway. So, if you want more information, I'll put a link down below. Thanks for asking the question. And uh, that was good. Veg source is a great resource. Veg source is a great resource. That rhymes. <laughs>